Hey guys, it's Tom from GarageFarm.net. Today we'll be looking at a quick way to create a decently looking and fully procedural stone walls in 3ds Max and Corona. It's a technique we use to create some of the background props for our mountain cabin project. Let's start by grabbing the additional plugins. First off, the Debris Maker script. As you can see, it's used to generate a series of objects that we can use to populate your scenes. They come as raw geometry, so we'll need to texture them in 3ds Max. That's where the other plugin called Lazy UVWs comes in handy. Let's grab the most recent release and then head back to 3ds Max. Once installed, you will find the Debris Maker plugin in your top menu. As you can see, it's got quite a lot of geometry types you can generate, each with customizable parameters. For this particular tutorial, we'll be using river stones to make a pieces of rough stone. You can set the number of variations to generate, each created as a separate object and the few parameters that influence the final shape. Each one is optional and can be ticked on or off. And finally you can pick to add an optimization modifier, though this one will collapse the whole geometry and will lose all the other modifiers. So let's leave that one for now and run the script to generate our objects. Now we've got several stones created, each with its own modifier stack. They are quite smooth in shape at the moment, so let's try deleting all the relaxed modifiers. This kind of rough cut stone should be much better for our needs, so let's do the same for the other ones. Now let's get to the fun part and start distributing the stones. Let's start by drawing a simple line and adding a corona scatter object. Then let's add all the relevant objects, the spline to distribute on objects and all the river stones we generated as instance objects. Since we'll be using 2D on surface distribution mode, we'll need to extrude the spline to get a proper surface. As you can see, we instantly get all the objects distributed. And to better show what we're trying to achieve here, let's temporarily disable the Corona Scatterer and add some height variations to our plane. I think that should do it for now. So let's re-enable the Scatterer and as you can see, it's instantly updated to the new geometry. Now we'll need to handle the distribution account. By default, we'll have the scattering set to a fixed number of objects. Let's lower the number for now and set the display to full to get an idea of how it's all looking. To make the wall fully procedural, we would ideally make the distribution even regardless of the distribute on object size. To do that, let's stick the first query option and for now we'll set it to 430 per one square meter. Another thing we need to do is to make the distribution plane non-renderable, either through the object properties or in the layer explorer. Right now we have the stones distributed based on the plane's normals and the object Z axis, so we'll need to make some adjustments in the scattering. First, let's start by setting the align to normal to 1.0. This will make the stones rotate back to their original position. Then we can start randomizing the stones using the transformations tab. We'll be mainly adjusting the rotation and scale with a slight change in the translation. Last but not least, let's increase the number of distributed rocks to fill in the gaps in the walls. Now let's go about texturing the stones and first let's grab a few textures. We'll be mainly looking for rough cat or chipped rocks. Going back to 3ds Max, let's apply one of the textures and as you can see, we'll have some pinching on the object. So we're going to fix that with the lazy UVWs plugin. So let's execute that one from the scripting menu. And in the plugin interface, we're going to get a few types of mapping nodes that you can use. It's best to run a few tests to see which one will go better with your objects. Eventually, for this particular case, I found that the uh, capped sphere mode worked the best. 
Now let's set up some basic lightning and run the interactive renderer to see how our wall is looking. We can go one step further and add some randomness to separate stones. So let's start by adding a Corona multi-map with several different stone textures we downloaded earlier. We'll link that to the composite texture node that was created by the Lazy UVWs plugin and replace the single texture we had plugged in. Then we'll copy the whole node and replace some of the textures in their respective slots to give some randomness to the composite node. Afterward, just plug the composite nodes into color adjustment maps to get roughness and bump maps. And now we're good to go with such a material applied to all our stone objects. And as you can see, there's already some visible randomness in our wall. With all of this done, we can add some more details to our wall, like some fallen rocks, also added with Corona Scatterer. For that one, we'll be using the 1D scattering mode. Let's grab a simple spline, copy our previous Corona Scatterer object, and then let's change the distribute on object to our new spline and scattering mode set to 1D. All of our stones will be glued to the spline, so let's change the translation on the y-axis to move the objects away from the wall and move them slightly up on the z-axis. This way they won't intersect with the ground plane. Then maybe let's slightly decrease the scale to make the rocks smaller. Now let's get the final look of how it's looking now. That seems to be like a pretty good starting point. And I hope you find all the inspiration to create something bigger. Way bigger! Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.